Hi guys, it's Jason again. I'm coming to you with an article today. It's This is an add-on video pertaining to Obama's 9-11 speech, but I should have added this in here, but I forgot to. Uh, this is an article from Wikipedia. It's dealing in regards to the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize that Barack Obama was awarded. It says the 2009 Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to United States President Barack Obama for his efforts to strengthen the international diplomacy and cooperation between peoples. It says the Norwegian Nobel Committee announced the award on October 9, 2009, citing Obama's promotion of nuclear non-proliferation and new climate in the international relations fostered by Obama, especially in reaching out to the Muslim world. Obama is the fourth U.S. president to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize after Theodore Roosevelt in 1906, and so on, la la la. But anyways, we know the Antichrist in Revelation is to come in peace. He's supposed to come as a peace bringer. He brings peace to the world before the seven years of tribulation. Now we know the Antichrist through Revelation will be the one who signs the peace treaty in regards to Israel and Palestine, which is about to be signed at this very moment. Now you got to think about it. The um, Palestinians submitted a UN to the UN bid, uh, a UN bid to the Pal uh, United Nations for Israel's land. Now you got to think, Israel and Palestinians have already started the peace process. They just exchanged pr war prisoners a couple days ago, and that was the starting of the peace process. Well, Hamas wants, and the Palestinian people want Israel's West Bank. Well, the West Bank in Israel is Israel's only way of protecting their borders. That's the only way they've got to defend themselves because it's a higher elevation territory that overlooks the Palestinian people. And it's a good way for them to protect their borders and their, the safety of their people. But Hamas and the Palestinian people have submitted this bid two months, two months ago, wanting that land. Now, you got to think, it's already foretold in the Bible they get the land that's why the wrath is put the breaking of seal six is poured out upon the world so we know in the days to follow because the bid has got it, the vote for the uh, United Nations has got to be done before the end of the month all right in saying so when they're given that land to promote peace and safety between these two enemies Israel is going to have no way of protecting itself because once the Palestinian people have that West Bank, that means they're going to be in higher elevation above the Israel people. Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Israel. So there's going to have to be something given to them to secure their safety, to make them feel safe. That they're not going to be attacked. Because Israel only wants peace. But if they have to give their land away to usher in peace with their enemy, they're, they're going to. It's already been foretold. When this land is given to them by through the United Nations this week or next, because next week is the end of the month, they, they're going to need something to secure them this peace. That's where this seven-year peace treaty is going to come into play. Who is the only person that deals with the peace, pro peace process between Israel and Palestine? That's our 2009 Nobel Peace Prize winner. Barack Obama, our President of the United States. That's why I tell you he is the Antichrist. He will sign this peace treaty between these two nations, ushering in the start of the seven-year tribulation. And what does God say when you divide my land uh, of my chosen people? My wrath and fury will fall upon the, the nations that came against her. That's why I tell you the breaking of seal six is about to happen in the days to follow or week to follow. That's why God, uh, Jesus says in Luke 21, 36, he says, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. That verse clearly says all these things that must come to pass. Meaning, for you post-tribbers that think the post or mid-tribulation is going to happen in the middle, you guys are wrong because this clearly tells you right here that you're escaping all the destruction, all the wrath beforehand. Pray that you're accounted worthy to escape it all before it even starts. So that clearly shows you there's a pre-trip. The breaking of seal six's destruction is about to happen. That's why I keep coming on here telling you guys the rapture can happen any day between now and the end of the month because that's God's word. And if you believe in our God, then you've got to believe what he promises is got to be true. Now, there's, there's many characteristics of uh, the um, Antichrist in Daniel. All right. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, meaning seven years. Each day is one year. 
This important phrase indicates that the event starts the 70th week, the 70th year of tribulation, is the signing of the, the seven-year covenant between the Antichrist and Israel. Daniel's 70 week is certain that the signing of the covenant begins the period of the tribulation. The tribulation will begin when the Antichrist signs that seven-year covenant, just like it says in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And he will break it in the middle of the seven years, like I told you, when he sets up the abomination of desolation and sits on the throne in the newly rebuilt Jewish temple that's about to be built once they sign this peace treaty and creates the abomination of desolation. It says, at the halfway point of the tribulation, which is three and a half years, the Antichrist will break this covenant with Israel, which is called the abomination of desolation. And this also signals the three and a half mark remaining before Christ's return to earth and his earthly kingdom in the Battle of Armageddon, which the Battle of Armageddon happens first, then his millennium, thousand year millennium reign. But also in Daniel uh, chapter 11, verse 37, it says, Neither shall he regard. Now, you got to remember this. It's very important. It's a very important verse dealing with Antichrist. Daniel chapter 11, verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, meaning our Christianity God, the one and only true living God. What does it say? It says, Nor the desire of women. Now, this is not talking about the physical woman. It's talking about the bride of Christ. What does God Consider the bride of Christ is the Christians, the saved, the ones that have sought Him. This is not talking about a physical woman. It's talking about Christianity, Christians that are going to be caught up in the rapture. Now, we know for a fact Obama is not Muslim. He won't even hold his hand over the Bible. What does the rest of this verse say? Nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. Meaning he's going to pronounce himself to be God. Just like I showed you in his 9-11 speech and what he'll do in the middle of his seven, the middle of the seven years of tribulation on the throne, which in he creates the abomination of desolation and pronounces himself to be God to the whole world. So guys, I'm, this is just another video add-on to the, the Obama speech, but I just want to point this out so you guys are very clear. A lot of people are coming at me like, oh, Obama's not the Antichrist. This, I mean, what I'm showing you is factual information and shows you clearly that he is not a Christian. He supports the Muslim movement and what Muslims hate Christians. That's why I keep posting all these videos of Muslims, you know, uh, killing Christians all over the world. Obama is Muslim. He don't care for the Christians. I don't know how any other way I can show you that he is the Antichrist. You know, I'm sticking myself out here on a, on a limb for even telling you this, but I don't care. That's my job. I'm going to tell the world the truth. And that's why I leave you guys with this information in this video. I love you all. Later.